what is an oscillator? An oscillator is the fundamental of sound, my friend. If you understand what an oscillator is, then you understand life. Here you will learn some things that might seem a tad boring, but in hindsight will be very valuable when it comes to sound design, mixing, and even mastering. So please oscillate that like button and subscribe. So to oscillate means to swing back and forth like a cyclone or just at a regular speed is what it actually means. And that's exactly what an oscillator does. There's a center point that's zero, and then on one side of that is positive. And as the oscillator swings or oscillates that direction, it has to come back. And the other side of that is negative. And this correlates directly to sound pressure waves that your eardrums receive and becomes perceived as sound. As the air gets pushed, there becomes a vacuum behind it. The vacuum's negative. The push is positive. The result is sound. So... The faster these waves happen is considered the frequency of them. And frequency by the ear is perceived as pitch. So a faster frequency, a higher pitch. Lower frequency, higher frequency, higher frequency. And so when measuring these frequencies, they're actually measured by one entire passing of the oscillation. If we go here to here, and back, that's one entire cycle. The wave we just heard, which is this wave here, that, my friend, is the basic building block of every single sound you have ever heard. If I was to take this sound and turn it into a square wave, for example, that is now a square wave. Now, the deal with that, if we look here, is I want you to notice all these little spikes. Each and every single one of those spikes is actually one of these, a sine wave. Every spike all the way up is just another sine wave. And these are called harmonics. If I have a sine wave playing right here, it's about 100 something hertz. Let's say it was 150. The next one would be 300 hertz, and that would be a harmonic. About right there, probably. So when we look at our wave here, that's our original one. I want you to notice we got these little indentations that are kind of waving around. And for this example, I've got this sine wave outputting to our output channel here. But then in the middle, I have it being sent to another one. And this one here is being sent out to that same output. But what we're gonna do in the center before it reaches this output to meet back up with its brother is we're going to affect it and change it. I have here pitched it up so that it is a harmonic of the original sound. And we're gonna see in this wave shaper or this wave, uh, this oscilloscope, what is happening. So as I turn it up, you'll notice we get this indentation. All of a sudden, this is starting to look more like a square wave. It's not there, we still have this strong peak. But what if we found a, another one of these harmonics that started bringing that peak down? And that is the basic idea of the square wave, is when you add enough of those harmonics, you're going to end up getting a square wave, which is why square waves sound so harsh and so bright. It might not make sense. You might not, you might be wondering, like, how did, it still doesn't make sense. How does it work? So to help you out, remember that positive negative we talked about? 
one side's positive one, one side's negative one, right? So what we're going to do is that same signal that I just did a harmonic with, we are instead just going to flip it to be an exact opposite. And I want you to see what happens to the signal. As I matched volumes, these are still playing. Nothing happened. These are both still playing. It went away. What if I turn it up and go past it? Look at our oscilloscope here. See these points? It's inverted. It's an inversion of itself. So if the top's positive and the bottom's negative, that's zero. That's complete cancellation because I'm adding this sine wave, but flipped to itself. So for every peak here, we'd have a peak at the bottom. And that's what's going on in this channel. There is a peak on the opposite side for every single one of these. And when we interlace them, nothing. And those mathematics is how doing a bunch of harmonics can create, a scare, uh, can create a square wave. Because if we add a bunch of waves all together at the same time, a bunch of sine waves, then we're going to be doing a bunch of weird mathematics that's going to map out to be something different. Your vocals are a combination of sine waves creating the sound that you're making. And if we were to use a computer, it's just, it's just a bunch of calculations of up and down wave pulses. So to show that further, if I go back and add this harmonic again, and you know, we're getting closer to the square wave. If we actually go look at it here, look at what's happening. We have different harmonics that didn't exist before. That's the original. Let's do this so we can see it as I turn it up. As I turn this up, and if we look at a square wave, we look at a saw wave. It's just a square wave with less harmonics and less information or a sine wave with more harmonics and more information. So a lot of sine waves, sawtooth. Sine, square, saw, there's, there's a million different types of wave types that aren't just those, but they're all just combinations of these sine waves. And all those properties are actually much the same. That's exactly what distortion and saturation is doing. Saturation and distortion are affecting the waves and the shape of the waves in a, fa a fashion that creates harmonics. So if we take a look at that, here's our final output here. Gonna add a distortion for no good reason. So now as we add this distortion, Every single one of those, you see a different wave form that is just a bunch of sine waves and you see more harmonics. So these combinations of saturation and harmonics and wave shapes and all these things combined with filters and other tools make cool sounds like these ones. If I go to the effects here, we've got a distortion. We've got other effects, a filter. Turn this off. It's just that nastiness of a distortion with a filter on it. Filter here. It's just a filter moving on wow, showing us more and less of all those harmonics that were created by that distortion, which works off the same fundamentals of wave shaping, which is just a bunch of sine waves basically put together to shape waves in a specific manner. It's a wonderful thing, really. Now that we're done hanging tin and carbon waves, let's check this out one more time. Oscillation is moving back and forth. Frequency is how frequent the oscillation occur occurs and completes itself. 
Uh, wave shapes, we've got a bunch of different shapes of waves, but really they're all based off the same fundamental sine wave, just in different harmonics or at different rates and speeds, all adding together to make these interesting looking shapes. And these wave types or wave shapes combined with filters and other effects create some stinking cool sounds. That's what Serum, Omnisphere, Massive, all of those things are built off of. If you were feeling back and forth about this video, stop oscillating. Yeah. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate it. Subscribe. This is Warren with Scale Audio and adios.